Chapter Twenty One of the Tale of Benny Badger. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Tale of Benny Badger by Arthur Scott Bailey. Chapter Twenty One, The New Home. When Benny Badger went wandering off to find a safer and pleasanter neighbourhood in which to make a new home for himself. He had no idea at all as to where he should go. He only knew that he wanted to get a good long distance away from the place where he had been living. Wherever he decided to settle, it must be some spot where the ungrateful rancher wouldn't be likely to find him, and set a trap in his doorway again. On and on Benny travelled until at last he met a spry young chap, one of the deer mouse family, who stopped still and stared at Benny as if he would like to speak to him, but didn't quite dare to. Hello, said Benny Badger, do you live around here? The deer mouse answered politely with a nod, as if he would like to talk if he weren't too shy. Do you find this an agreeable neighbourhood? Benny Badger inquired. Very, the deer mouse replied in a thin, piping voice. Is there plenty of good water nearby? Benny asked him. Yes, indeed, the deer mouse exclaimed. There's a water hole right over there, and he pointed over his shoulder without taking his eyes off Benny Badger. He knew it was safer to keep a close watch of strangers. Benny sat down. He had journeyed a long way, and he was tired. I'll go and have a drink as soon as I'm rested, he said. I'm glad there's good water here. This seems to be a pleasant place. Are there any good gophers and prairie dogs in the neighborhood? Oh, yes, the deer mouse answered. But you needn't worry about them. They won't harm you if you mind your own affairs. I've lived here a long time, and they haven't touched me. What about owls? Benny Badger wanted to know. The deer mouse looked solemn all at once. There are a few, he admitted. If you're thinking of settling here, you'll have to watch sharp for them. I've had several narrow escapes. Benny Badger smiled. I'd like to see the owl that could hurt me, he cried. And as for gophers and prairie dogs, I like them. This is the very place I've been looking for. And as soon as I have rested a little longer and had a drink of that good water, I'm going to dig myself a den right where I'm sitting now. The deer mouse pricked up his long ears at that. To the best of his belief, no badger had ever lived in the neighborhood before. And if the stranger was going to dig a hole, he intended to watch him while he worked. If you feel rested enough now, I'll show you the way to the water hole, the deer mouse said presently. He was impatient for the fun to begin. Benny Badger stood up. Lead on, he commanded. I'll follow. And then he yawned for it was already long past his usual bedtime. The deer mouse trembled slightly as he looked into Benny's great mouth, and he took care to keep well ahead of the stranger all the way to the water hole, and back again too. But he soon forgot his fear when Benny Badger began to dig the new den. The dirt flew in such showers as the deer mouse had never seen in all his life, except during a cyclone. Benny had begun to dig, as he said he should, in the exact spot where he had sat and rested. But for one reason or another he soon changed his mind and started to dig a different hole a short distance from the first one. Soon he moved again, and after he had begun no less than five holes, only to leave each one unfinished, the deer mouse interrupted him with a sharp cry. Stop, stop, he begged Benny. Please don't do that. 
Benny Badger paused and stared at him in amazement. "'What is it?' he asked. "'What's the matter?' The deer mouse was all a flutter. "'Goodness me!' he exclaimed. "'You'll have the whole neighbourhood dug up if you're not careful.'" End of Chapter 21